Hey everyone, I'm Rob, it's Sunday today, and that means it's time to sit down and chat all things chat, GBT, and generative AI, and talk about the news of the week. But actually, before we begin, this is not a regular news video. Today, we are deep diving specifically in the news that chat GPT has released its code interpreter for all uh, plus users. So I'm really excited to share this with you guys because it's, 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 it's mind-blowingly cool. So on July 6th, OpenAI released and announced the code interpreter was available for everyone. And you might be thinking like, okay, code interpreting, that is for coders and programmers, not useful for me. No, pause, pump the brakes. It is, um, it introduces this multi-modality that we've been talking about earlier in the channel, you know, the, um, different inputs, different outputs. Okay, I'm just like very North American and very excited right now. So let's let's just dive into some use cases in what this means. Now for those GPT-4 paid users, what you wanna do is when you go into ChatGPT, you'll click on the hamburger menu and that will bring up your chats. From there, you're gonna go and click on your settings. And from your settings, you're going to click on beta features and make sure that the code interpreter is now toggled. Once you do that, you can close on out. And when you see the ChatGPT-4 option, you can click on the down arrow and yeah, go ahead with the code interpreter. And now that you have enabled it, you'll notice that there is the plus option here in which we can upload files. So I'm gonna demonstrate some use cases, starting with some of the most easiest and, and simplest and also relevant and useful, then go into the more technical. Okay, let's dig into the first use case. The first use case is useful for all the students out there that, is watch, that are watching this video. Uh, what you can do with the code interpreter is get ChatGPT to read PDF files. Now, why is that useful? Well, of course, we have a lot of research articles that we want to get the gist of. And I guess this doesn't only go for students, but for those working in the field in which academic papers are highly useful. So if you go to an academic paper, download the PDF, you will be able then to put it in ChatGPT. So I have downloaded this paper and shout out to my former research mentors. It's always nice to give a shout out to people that who have uh, helped your academic career and are yeah inspirations to you. So uh, Sana, Ava, you're probably not watching this, but I still reflect very fondly on you. Now, uh, what you wanna do is you can go ahead and click the plus option and upload a file or simply drag and drop. So let's go ahead and drag and drop the file. And then I can say something along the lines of, um, please summarize this. Let's go ahead and press enter and see what comes up. So the interesting thing now is when we use the code interpreter, there will be a little text box that will pop up saying that it's working. Here it is, uh, the extracted tax text appears to contain a discussion on limitations and here are some of the key points yep now i was a part of writing this paper so this all looks good to me now the interesting thing is that we have these findings what if we needed them in a powerpoint setting so let's try that out so please prepare the key findings in a powerpoint slide with several bullets And there you have it. Here's a link to download the file. Let's check out this PowerPoint slide. There you go. I mean, okay, it's not pretty. It's definitely not pretty. However, like this is incredible. This is really incredible. Also too, just what this can, like the, the initial steps of where this can go is, yeah, I'm blown away. I'm, yeah, I'm just simply blown away by this. This is so interesting. So now I realize many of you are not in school. However, the summarization of PDFs is still really interesting and really relevant, especially for all of us that read investor reports, um, key insights, thought leadership uh, from different companies. For example, McKinsey has made a 68 page PDF about generative AI. Um, so what I've done here is I've downloaded it and then I've put it into ChatGPT saying, please summarize this report from McKinsey about AI, include key insights and top takeaways that will have uh, affect employers. Okay, so there we have it. Now, it is interesting that it does try to clean up the text and synthesize it. Uh, it will list as well some of the key insights that it'll be focusing on. Um, and because the report is so large and there are formatting issues, of course, it's not going to be, be perfect. However, um, it does list the key insights from this report. Um, it does also talk about the top takeaways from employers as instructed, and this looks pretty good. Now, the important thing of why this would be useful is, you know, for time intensive uh, purposes. So I know that a lot of people do want to read 
all of these reports, you know, they want the key insights, but they just don't have the time. And I think that this for now is a very, um, I mean, it's not a perfect and precise way to get information, but this is, I think this is pretty, pretty cool. Now let's move over to the image side of things because indeed it can, yeah, it can adjust images and it can even turn them into GIFs. Uh, you can do editing a little bit with movies, which is super exciting. So this is something, uh, just a very brief use case that I find very interesting um, is that you can do this with the code interpreter. So what I've done is I've taken my current consulting company's logo um, from Wikimedia Commons, and then I've put in this prompt, please animate this logo into a four second GIF. The image should cross fade out and in again after four seconds over a white background. The animation should loop. So let's take a look and see how it goes. Okay, so let's go ahead and download the animated logo. And then I will actually open this in Chrome. This is pretty incredible. Like, how could, like, okay, North American, calm down, calm down. Um, anyway, so yeah, I think this is uh, very useful for, this is really cool, oh my gosh, okay. <clears throat> no. So yeah, I think this is really useful for some of the kind of like design ins and odd job, like some of the design odd jobs that, uh, yeah, you might be wanting to do um, that would be fun to stick in a PowerPoint, um, yeah, to put in a, an email signature. So just little basic stuff like this, the code interpreter can do. Now, as we get more comfortable using the code interpreter, we can use this for more complicated and interesting tasks. So one of the things that we can use a code interpreter for is to upload CSV files and ask it to manipulate and create information from it. So in this demonstration, I have downloaded a CSV file of all the wind turbines in the United States. And my prompt is, please provide a map of the USA that shows the location of all wind tur turbines. Use a blue dot to indicate the wind turbine. Okay, so it's done. Let's check the results. Okay, let's go ahead and open the file, which I have now done in Chrome. This is, inc this is incredible. This is incredible. Seriously. This is so neat. Wow. And it literally took less than like three minutes to do this. This is so neat. It's taken a while to load because I feel like my computer is just like, I do not have the RAM. But look at this. How neat. That is so cool. That is so, this is so cool. This is so, this, this is, this is really cool. Yep. Now, as we get more tech heavy, we can also use Code Interpreter to look into SDKs for coding and so much more. So for example, I had run a previous prompt and what I wanted to do is basically just explain a GitHub repo. So I went to the Green Software Foundation Carbon Aware SDK uh, because green software is a very interesting topic for me. I digress. Um, what I did is I plugged it in and said, explain this SDK, run a snippet of code, tell me how to best integrate it into my stack and convert some of the code to Rust. While I found it couldn't do some of the other things that I had asked, tell me how to best integrate it into my stack, it did come up and say, so what is your stack and I'll help you integrate it. Um, so again, that's just a call out to be precise. Anyways, uh, so what it did and was able to say is it was, bas it was basically able to read this zip file and say, okay, this is what this software development kit is about. Here are the main level components of what's in this file. And there you go. Um, now, the, uh, another part that I found super interesting about this was uh, I was able to take one of the files and just ask for more clarity about it. So. I said, so I f went into the file and said, um, there's a get forecast.cs. So I wanted to know what this file was about. And it said, yeah, this C sharp file defines an Azure function named get forecast. And this is how it is broken down. It checks the query, the parameters, which are these, and this is how it does it. Now, this is so huge for, for example, just understanding code, understanding functions getting perceptions and getting explanation on the things that exist on uh, GitHub, especially if you are uh, a programmer, developer, architect. Now I did say, I was a little bit cheeky and I was like, can you translate this code into Rust? Although I know that Azure doesn't really uh, work with Rust so well, but we know that Rust is a very uh, energy efficient code, um, but it was able to provide a rough, tra uh, rough translation. Now, of course we need to you know, check this. I would not be able to do this because I don't have that knowledge 
yet, um, but it was able to use some workaround functions. And then here it spit out the code. So this is so interesting, I think, for literally code interpretation and code translation. And it's so brilliant as well that you don't have to anymore copy and paste your code, especially because ChatGPT couldn't handle, you know, a large, you know, uh, yeah, like a large bunch of code. Um, but what we can do now is just literally insert files with the, you know, the millions of lines of code and say, hey, um, do X. So again, for I think for programmers, developers, architects, this is this is game changing. This is really game changing. There's so many more uses of this, and it's it's really it's really energizing. Um, while editing this video, I thought, oh, actually, I wonder if we can make graphs, and of course we can. So I stopped editing and then put in this. So I was able to get a an Excel file of Apple's uh, last five years financials, and so I said, just a simple, please create a timeline graph for Apple's return on sales. And there we have it. Yeah, there we go. Come on. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg of the capabilities of Code Interpreter. So hopefully you can see why this was such a big news item this week and why this, yeah, this week we've devoted the entire episode for it. Um, with that being said, I want to thank you so much for watching and of course wish you all a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye.